listening to the Pagan Center Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, pagancenteredpodcast.com. Hello. Hey, Kara. Hello. So that's big news of the Wild Hunt. Uh, they're moving their comment system over to discuss away from in- intense debate. You know, so I'm not sure I like that's either something one. Else, but, uh, that's, the one I, that's the thing I'm focusing on. <laughs> it's the comment system. <laughs> you know, I don't really like either comment system. Yeah, but intense debate is a horrible, poorly assembled piece of shit. Well, Disgust isn't much better, though. Yeah, but it's a better coded piece of... I don't know, I haven't found it to be crap yet. It's a piece of shit. They're both pieces of shit. I don't know, I've had all kinds of problems with Intense Debate, and Disgust just works. Never had a problem with Disgust. You know, I... I... It may be how people are setting it up, but I don't like how Disgust nests comments all the time. Well, when you reply to someone, it nests... It will only nest so many, and then it stops nesting. Huh. That's what I don't like about it. And then it gets confusing. Yeah, I never noticed that. I mean, granted, you can only go so far. I mean, you physically just run out of space at some point. Well, and I I don't understand why those comment systems, like either one of them, don't work better, because... Let's face it, I mean, you have old VBB bulletin boards that operated easily and properly. Why? <laughs> well, this mess is basically a bulletin board system. It's really comprehensive on the back end. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. Well, then I wish people would set it up better. That may be where the, the failing is. Yeah, because you can select different themes and stuff and... Yeah, yeah, yeah and that. I've seen that. I just like that I would discuss, I can subscribe to see what all the comments are going to be via email without having to post. Oh, see, I guess I don't give a shit enough to ever worry about that. Hey, Dave, WPA2. Yeah. How crackable was that? Uh, it's actually kind of hard. Uh, what you need to do is uh, make sure if you do WPA2 to only do AES, and you're pretty well set. Okay. Disable TKIP, basically. You don't want to know how primitive our uh, training was today on uh, wireless safety. Now, Joe, what exactly is it that you do with the government? Like, what is your position? Uh, Whipping boy, simple missile launchers. (laughs) Uh, Witness psychological degradation of about 1,500 co-workers in my building. Oh, well, that's like every large bureaucracy, though. Yeah. Yeah, but this bureaucracy builds stuff that goes boom. Here is a sentence that is absolutely true. I work for a madman in a missile launcher factory. Fantastic. (laughs) 
<laughs> that is true. That is very, unfortunately, very true. <laughs> No, no, no. The shrink I'm seeing is actually doing a paper on the guy from all his clients he's seen. <laughs> is he just an idiot or is he a sadist? Uh, Gephardt is a completely unfiltered sociopath. <gasps> Fantastic. He speaks Spanglerese. You know that uh, Casey Spangle? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, just verbs and nouns just come out of his mouth. He makes Bush look good. When Bush was having his moments. Bush was very good for spoonerisms. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Monday. Now, you can ask Dave how I'm built later, which is relevant. Monday, he sees me walking with a hammer. So he comes up to me and says, I've had, so he said, some BS. Then he said, well... There's been some complaints about you hitting people with hammers, and I'm going to have to ask you to stop. Dave, if I hit somebody with a hammer... Yeah, they're going to be in a hospital or dead. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't be here right now. That's pretty special. Yes. And when I mentioned this to my... Union rep, here was a statement. He said, well, a couple of weeks ago, Gephardt was uh, in an EEO complaint, uh, something or another, for another supervisor, and he was asked, does he, uh, how does he put it, is a supervisor a prejudice towards any of his employees? And Gephardt's response was, no, he treats them all like slaves, not just the niggers. Wow. I mean, yeah, wow. I mean, failing means you actually are in the game. You know, you I, I, I've worked in some pretty, like, fast and loose places. But I think if I had ever said the word nigger out loud... Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I would have been terminated, like, on that spot. Like, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, really, like, if you say nigger or cunt, those are usually, like, the magic words at work that you 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 end your career with. Yeah, there's a couple others on the list, but yeah. But I live in Mason country. So I've decided I should do a webcomic about this. I can promise you the people. artwork is going to be crowded. Hey, greet the Miles. There's people here. Oh, my God. Hi, people. I can, hey. pro I can promise you the artwork is going to be craptastic. The grammar is going to suck. You but if I grammar? just... Fuck you. <laughs> but if I just log my daily encounters, I promise you this, 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 this could go places. It could be like that shit my dad says site. Scurvy, you should start a Twitter account just for this. Crap, Scurvy does. Oh, no, I'm the same one where I, where I work. Are you kidding? Scurvy shit pile. Scurvy's craptastic life. I don't know, I can't complain all of a sudden done, I mean. Oh, <laughs> oh well. You can't complain, Scurvy. I'm pretty sure you could. <laughs> well, I do quite frequently. If you work at it. I'm leaving you. <laughs> <coughs> we have faith in your ability to complain. <laughs> Let it out. <laughs> you are among a team of experts at complaining about stuff. <laughs> Curvy, it's okay. Embrace your inner bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. See? All right. Skype is telling me my microphone is too hot. Does it sound too hot? <laughs> too hot? <laughs> <laughs> is the volume too loud? Is it burnt? You guys. <laughs> I think it works. 
Okay. Does that mean does it sound crackly? No, you sound clear. Okay. Your microphone is too hot. That's a new one. That is an old radio term. I don't know what else people would say. What do people say now if your mic level is too high? Um, Dave, turn down your gain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pitch, wow, gain, one of those things. Yeah, how are you going to explain that to, I don't know, people like your supervisor that use Skype? <laughs> uh, Dave uses a switchboard. Yeah, I mixer board. So yeah, yeah. Mm. So if I got a mixer board, I better know what the hell gain is. Yes. Yeah. Man calls his boss. Hey Frank, your voice is hot. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna work. <laughs> it's not your voice, silly. It's you, you would say your mic or your levels or. Yeah, oh, I know. Mike is on radio. Right people. I used to work in radio. It's been a news writer for for college radio station. Was See, then you used to INS. look at a VU meter. I was more of a sonar INS sort of type person. A VU meter. Yeah, Did a VU know? meter. Um, no, actually, I used to grab the morning newspaper and go through it and hook articles and then induce those into one or two sentences and give those to the DJ to read. That's what I did. I really did. I used to get mine off the morning newspaper. So our DJ was reading off things that everybody already knew about if they had the morning paper. It was rather redundant. I would make a snarky remark about me just looking at blinking lights, but yeah, we used to work <laughs> a radio station here on PCP, so... That was great until the radio station went out of business. We were the last show. That was awesome. Cool. I was on a broadcast bandwidth of 5 watts. If you're lucky, you might pick it up at the other end of the parking lot. <laughs> oh, it was massive. <laughs> Through your community college radio station, it was fun. The only radio stations I ever... Um Worked with or um, it's the word I'm looking for. It goes with my name. Oh, excuse me. Shithead. Shithead. <laughs> <laughs> that's his. That's his roommate's cat. Oh right. Now I used to make radio and TV stations of a tech. It was a class project. We had fun. It was our radio. <laughs> cool. If you want an idea of just how long ago this was, I was the one who got to tell the DJ that John Lennon had just been killed. And that's in college. I'm old. I don't want to say that he was in my history book, but he was. <laughs> uh, no, we weren't allowed to study anything popular culture that would have offended the uh, local churches. Wow. And yeah, for having such strong faith, they are so easily offended. Yes. Is there a podcast this evening? Yes. Yeah, let's get to that. <laughs> Actually, on the topic of uh, local churches, the uh, doctor, family do doctor I grew up with was uh, Catholic and Hispanic. And he was not allowed in the local Catholic church. Because? He was Hispanic. Ah, oh, that's very silly. 99% of Latin America is Catholic, isn't it? Yeah. He's still not allowed in the Catholic Church there. All right, we have officially run out of pagan standard time here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, we haven't. It hasn't been 35 minutes yet. <laughs> so we'll get Dad. started in five, four, three, two, one. And welcome to tonight's episode of PCP, the Pagan Standard Podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Scurve. Also joining us tonight are 
I'm Barrett. I'm Kara. I'm Miles. All right, we did that in alphabetical order perfectly. So tonight we have a scurvy episode. Criticism, <laughs> gossip, and no biggie. And we'll get to that right after these messages. And we're back. Oh, crap. We're doing my or spy stuff? We are so screwed. Yep, go ahead and kick it off, Scur. Uh, I hate to say this, but pop me a link. That machine's currently down. <laughs> so we started talking about this last week. When we were planning to cover a uh, certain news story, we managed to cover that in 30 seconds, so that didn't fill up an episode. Uh, we then analyzed 593 episodes of Pagans Tonight for topics we did not discuss and thought were interesting. And that only lasts about half an hour. So we started talking about this stuff last last recording. <laughs> and there was a good break in discussion. Uh, and we're going to pick up as if it's a fresh episode. And we're going to pick up at the point where we're saying that uh, sometimes people just have a bad day. Yeah, I had one of those last week. My bad. Yeah, so... You have here in the notes that people will be stiffy from time to time, and you just kind of got to come to expect that reality does things to people. Like, job stress. Like, say, if you're jumping out of planes, you know, fighting fires, that might make you a little snippy once in a while. And that should be perfectly fine. Yeah, I seem to remember someone had issues with that. Yeah, certainly somebody who doesn't jump out of planes. Or does... Never mind. <laughs> I know they listen to the show. <laughs> they do? Someone does. Maybe. But you take that back. Okay, you are interfering with show. my denial mechanism. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> there is nobody who listens to the show. So we're going to go with, um, you know, certain someone who doesn't, who is unemployed, arguing with someone who is employed in a highly stressed situation. See, here's, some, here's a, another side tangent, too. We're just coming up for rant time, okay? Now, for us pagan activists, most of us have day jobs. Yeah. And when it comes to day job and, as I like to call it, the hobby job, yeah, isn't this where I put in rant time? Four or five times, three times. <laughs> Come on, Dave. You had a couple of good rants. Let me hear one. Uh, well, I mean, you, there, your point that you have here in the show notes is: let's face it, that pagan leaders, media, teachers, and activists are overwork. Oh yeah. And my my whole rant kind of boils down to the same old crap. And no matter how many times I say it, or to who I say it, or to what group that reforms itself, thankfully, kudos to you if you reform yourself away from this infinite cycle of stupid. Um, it's just, you always want to, with the pagan organization, with some crazy weird dynamic, where you wind up with this situation where about... I would say about 90%, 9 tenths of your organization is completely uninvolved. And one tenth right. of your organization is doing all the work. And yes. And usually the leaders of the organization are doing the vast majority of the work that's being done. But they're not really doing much to encourage or embrace those that are trying to help out. And thus, they start a loop. Where, well, since they don't really give anybody a pat on the back for a good job for helping us, people just don't want to help. And then they, the leaders do all the work, and they're angry that nobody's helping them out. Meanwhile, they're not recognizing the efforts that other people are doing to help them out. And thus the infinite cycle begins, and eventually there's burnout. And then sometimes the organization falls apart. I'd like to quickly rant about that. Go ahead. Please. Okay. It is that in the past four years, I was the director of our local Pagan Pride Day Festival and the group that I inherited it from claimed to be all supportive, let's make this a big happy festival, we, we all work together hurrah, but um, I tried to organize fundraisers to help finance the event 
and I got very little support. Everyone was was just lackadaisical. So, and also the the cost of planning and hosting a fundraising event cost more than f- and funds it under raised, and so therefore we didn't do fundraisers. Um, I tried to get help with organizing and locating and con. Hunting vendors, no one really ever done about that. How oh, I handle all of that. Um, my co-chair of the event um, <clears throat> um, they write all the rituals and and organize the workshops of the festival. Good. But we tried to get volunteers on board, and you get four or five people who would be there for about half an hour, and then say, "Oh, geez, dude, my friends are here. I gotta go. Bye." And so they're gone. That's the day. Um, I had one reliable volunteer who helped me run a 500-person festival. Um, so I got used to as I, I, my co-chair's help in in um um in most types and rituals. These fight these fight layouts and contacting vendors and doing all the schlep work was down to two people. It got rather tiresome. Rant done. Well, here's my big deal when it comes to organizations. People offer criticism. Well, here's my view on the right to offer criticism. The right to offer criticism is earned. Good. If you're just Thanks. along for the ride, well, yeah. yeah. You can't really do anything about the whole free speech thing, but really... I don't have to listen to it. And quite frankly, my viewpoint is, is in, unless you're contributing, you, you don't have your um, rights to complain. That's pretty much my viewpoint. If you got it some does, sort of vested interest... Well, that does um, sound like the argument of... If you don't vote, then you can't complain about who's in charge. Which I agree with. Well, I got quiet. Well, it, it, it's, uh, I'm doing a lot of production stuff right now. Sorry. But um, <laughs> you know, one, one thing that's, that's got me, uh, uh, it was a comment left on the Wild Hunt today. Um... Yeah, I'm going to ramble for a little bit here. Sorry. Um, okay. But, you know, just to add some context, tonight is the day of uh, when uh, uh, Jason finally announced that he was moving over to Pathios, that basically he is now employed by Pathios instead of trying to sustain himself on donations, which are have been, you know, pro- presumably insufficient. Um, hmm. um, so. A certain show about pagans... Tonight demonstrated the um, how um, forthcoming yeah, pagans yeah. can be with funds. Pagans tonight. are not very forthcoming with funds tonight. Um, but speaking of pagans tonight, that's where actually this <laughs> comment is going. Uh, Ed Hubbard of Pagans Tonight at PagansTonight dot com uh, noted on the Wild Hunt that you know. He was excited because this gives him an opportunity to sponsor the Wild Hunt so that in exchange of him providing money to, uh, you know, provide, uh, I guess you would say, monetary uh, endorsement of the Wild Hunt, he can then in exchange, you know, um, expose, you know, his businesses to the, the readers of the Wild Hunt. And you can you can take that pro or con and you can think whatever you want of Ed Hubbard. But I think the fact that uh, a sponsorship model um, is presenting itself is uh, kind of interesting. And uh, the, I think the thing, in, 
like like you guys noted in the pagan community, we just not even the pagan businesses want to put up money usually for sponsorships, and that's kind of sad. Or even oh. individuals that are somewhat well off, just throwing money in and saying, you know what, fuck it, uh, I'm just going to advertise. I don't know the proud pagan podcaster, the pagan newswire collective, or the wild times. I don't care. Just put their name on it. I don't run a business, but since you want to advertise something, to get people made aware of this good cause. Pagan authors tend to do pretty well. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Do they? Somewhat. Uh, they publish well. a lot of crap and don't really focus on quality. <laughs> yeah. So if they put out a ton of books, see, to me, that's not doing well. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to read the last book we're sent. We're supposed to review. I mean, it's. Well, you know I'm having difficulty that. with it. I mean, the rest of us kind of blew through it. Well. I need I need a hook, and it, it's not provided. Good point. But I mean, there's been so many, so much speculation about pagan authors. Well, this guy was great in like his first and second book, but the rest was just crap. It's like he was writing just to get paid. Some of the businesses here, businesses around here, are really helpful with donations and such. I hear a phone ringing. Um, some businesses, yeah, um, local stores and things are really good about hunting money for local events. They really are. And um, so it's like the Pagan Pride Day in Raleigh had huge donations from half a dozen profitable local businesses. So there's really no fault or blame there. No, I mean, Pagan, you know, we, we remarked several times, CNC PVD seems like a really healthy event. There's a, you know, yes, you got decent turnout. It's one of the best. Uh, yeah, it is. really are one of, the, one of the, the best PPDs, to be honest. I mean, I've been yeah. to a lot, and they all tend to suck in different ways. I even hosted a PPD. Except we couldn't call it a PPD, but because the regional coordinator in Pittsburgh was a bit of a bitch and wouldn't reply to my email, and now her son wants to date a sister of a co-host on this show, and wow, Karma's a bitch! <laughs> It reminds me. Somebody needs a swirly. <laughs> Authors I've met who have been notables at hanging events do seem to be willing to allow a name used in advertising and media blurbism, if I can make blurbism a word. Um, but as far as actually fronting money to go towards things, myself included, I haven't seen as much financial output there as there is just um, advertising by name recognition. Yeah, Many authors. Well, I, I think a lot of people, I, I think you draw people to events just because you're a cool person. <laughs> I honestly never knew you Who's were that? an author until like, Who's like, that? like a few months of you being with us on the show. I'm like, you're an author? Oh, me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell, don't be you're silly. You're too cool to be an author. I'm waiting for that elitist academic a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, we're, we're, here at PCP, we're really, really, really terrible at checking credentials. We are terrible at checking credentials. <laughs> That's how we've managed to have, like, Anonymous as practically a regular co-host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny. Well, yeah. We, we, actually, I don't really don't think we check credentials until somebody utters BS. 
We are a show for average pagans by average pagans. Yeah, pretty much. Now, if BNPs want to call themselves average pagans, we'll gladly not check credentials. <laughs> to We've had BNPs here? I didn't even know who Peter Diving was until, like, Star Foster <laughs> tried it, okay? <laughs> oh, let's not even get started on the whole Dave Karen incident. <laughs> Big name pagans come on the show. We just don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, here's my story. I live in a box. I don't turn on the TV. Unless it's on Dave's or Star's Facebook, as far as news go, I don't read it. She's humping name pagans like not being treated like celebrities. They just want to be treated like the other guy who who walked in and doesn't really know what's going on and has and, um, has one of his hooks on inside out. You know, it's not a big deal. And, and celebrities don't want the grand treatment. They just want to be yeah, another guy in the room. I think, I think there's this kind of a predisposition for that, though. Because, I mean, What's if you that? look, look yeah. at, like, the last 20 years or so of, of just paganism in general, all the people we tend to hate and bash on are those people that are famous and on television. With the news and their talk shows, like Sylvia Brown and Fiona Horn. And a Sarah Palin of Salem. <laughs> oh, blarf. That's a bizarre comparison. I think I have the to, analogy works. I have to think with this head. Thanks for putting that in there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when I get my order of brain bleach in, I'll, 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 I'll hook you up. Yeah, send some my way, please. I'll bring some down for Thanksgiving. <laughs> but, I mean, you can think of the biggest <laughs> of the big, big name pagans, like Selena Fox. And yeah. if you have physical proximity to her, you could just walk up to her and just start a conversation. I have. She's great. She's awesome like that. She's she's not like I'm big and important, and you're just a you. As a moron, you can't talk to me. No, she isn't that at all. She's she's you know. Walk up and give her a hug, and she'll she'll hug you back. I don't, yeah, absolutely. Well. What makes a big name pagan, though? Um, What's the qualifications? I think if you go to a random pagan gathering and they know who that person is, that's a big name pagan. Like Miles I is think, a big name pagan. No, I am not. Yeah, no, I'm not. Cool. I don't think I am. Um, I don't know. I mean, you had. A, I almost got. I almost got my ass kicked by your cult follow on there for disagreeing with you a couple times. I think. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that um, let's see. I think that big name pagans. I would say um, never. How his name? Let's see. Um, twice last name is and the P. It's a bunch of books. Um, yeah, I've forgotten his name now. Hmm? Yeah, it's Penzac. Penzac is a big name pagan. Um, Patrick McCollum and the Fox all these are big name pagans. I, I think Tina Dibing is about to become a big name pagan. His name is not on everyone's lips, but I think it should be. Um, Carl Foster is about to break into being a big name pagan. Yep. Jason is a big name pagan. Um, there's local big niche name pagans, like there might be some big name pagan in Sacramento who's huge in Sacramento that I've never heard of, but everyone out there goes, I don't know, I'll invent a name, Lady Blackwell. Now, Lady Blackwell, she's great, but I don't know who the hell that is. I'm completely unknown. If you go to, I don't know, Oregon... No one knows who I am. I'm completely invisible. I, I'm okay with that. Don't we have friends out that way? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jason we do. Jason Pitts and 
Okay. And we yes. got, yeah, we got a few friends. In here. Oregon and Sarah um Dolph makes dead animals come alive. Yeah, Remember she's her? out there and uh, one of our listeners and, is also out there. And the steampunk model Kate Lambert is out there as well. So yeah. Anyway. Oh, well, she's taken, but she's out there. Anyway, um, I really would not clarify my, classify my, and was a big name pagan. Don't worry, being a big name pagan is not something you declare for yourself. It's something that everybody else declares for you. Well, I don't want them to. <laughs> I haven't done enough to qualify being one. Um, you yeah. know. If you choose to think that I could be nominated for the ranking, yeah, great, but I would vote for somebody else. I'd well, vote for Jason. Well, I'll be sure to join next Foster. year's, you know, Pagan Academy Awards. And, uh, oh, God. We'll have the People's Choice Pagan Awards and see who's the new big-name pagan for the year. <laughs> that's funny. Um, actually, that's a... Actually, you know what? That's a pretty cool idea. Who's the... Let's have an up-and-coming Pagan of the Year contest and see who gets nominated from all across the country or the world or Facebook or whatever. You can have a Lifetime Achievement Award or, or, or Best, best Lord wow. Award. I know the Lifetime Achievement Award I want. God. <laughs> I'm not sure that we do want to know that, but go ahead. See, it was a pissed off, Rick rolled, and or generally upset most big, the largest number of big name pagans. <laughs> Caro just get the award for the the most trolled pagan. Oh <laughs> fuck! Okay. I'm telling you. Yeah. Trolls Seriously, and you crazies. Just... Hmm? Trolls and crazies. I, I'm Cara. a magnet. We Sorry. should make a comic. Oh my god. Trolls and crazies. Make sure to use asterisks in every single comic. Oh my god. A what? I'm sorry? That was literally insane. Yeah, I don't. I, I want to make fun of it, but I know how wrong it is to make fun of it. I, and, yeah, and it, it is. It is. I mean, as one human to another, I mean, that's that was not yeah. pretty to watch because, you know, I mean, here, here's the deal. You know, you have someone who's on your ass, on your ass, on your ass, and 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 they're they're doing what is what has been typical behavior, um, but they're doing it to a degree that you realize, you know, what this person's experiencing some problems right now and needs some assistance, and uh, you know, I, and I feel bad for that, but at the same time, I really don't want someone wearing my skin. Yeah, I'm not that. Or hiding in my basement or, you know. So... That don't sound like a good fashion statement. Yeah, so, I mean, I have compassion, but I'm also a little wary because, yeah, I mean, I... I am not that big of a jerk that I attract these people. I don't know what the deal is. Or maybe I am, I don't know. Managed to bring this back on topic. Yes. Mm, we have Points topic. for me. Points for me. <laughs> Dang. I get the cookie. I mean, I, I, that is a point we did not include in the, the outline here. Is that sometimes people, it's not just the day to day stress of work. It's an avalanche of everything that fell on them all at the same time in one day. Exactly. Yeah. And lashing out is one of their coping mechanisms. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. I'd yeah, I like mean, to officially apologize <laughs> to Star Foster. Yeah, we won't talk about that. Yeah. Oh, it, it was a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. I realized the tension level's up at an 8 or a 9, I'm just modulating it down to a 4. Well, and I mean, that happens. I mean, ev ev everyone has a bad day. You know, it, but here's the thing, though. And I think this is the other the other side to this claim. Um, everyone has a bad day, and definitely cut them slack for when they have a bad day. 
uh, but when they don't realize it and, you know, they, they don't then go back to the person that, you know, they, they bit them, you know, or, you know, you were out of line or whatever and apologize, um, that to me, you know, I don't, I don't really, I, I lose respect for the person at that point. I don't lose respect for them because they had a bad day and they snapped. I lose respect for them that they then couldn't come back and say, you know, I was having a really bad day. We still cool. And the, uh, the other side of the coin is when you're observing these type of interactions, especially online, and there's some key signs that the person is not in the realm of normal discourse. Like they're just either not making sense or they're pounding shift and then any number on their keyboard. Or yeah. they're they go on and on and on and you see post after post after post of them just talking to themselves. Yeah. That's that's something else entirely. That's not someone having a bad day. That's someone wow. having difficulties. Yeah, and, and at that point you really do need a intervention. Find someone that has their you know, in person contact info. See what exactly. Because they need help. Yeah, well, I haven't gotten that far exactly. gone yet, have I? No, not yet. But, but me and Kara and Star and a bunch of other people were involved in a discussion on the wild hunt, and we came to realize that one person really did have essentially a mental breakdown. Yeah. And, you know, at that point, they're not an internet troll. They're experiencing a, uh, a mental illness that they need to... Uh, I hate saying treated because that sounds like, oh, you got to go to the mental ward now. But no, it's just like, you know, take the mental equivalent of some, some Benadryl or some, some Robitussin and sleep it off. Right. Actually, a lot of times just realizing, oh, wow, I'm totally fucked up right now. Can do a lot to uh, set you on the right course. You know, when people get to that point, though, they don't realize that, though. I, I mean, they can't. Like, 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 you know, They're in a circle. It like they're going in a circle. You. That, it just sneaks up on you, and you don't realize you're doing this. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, that yeah, <laughs> that that was unfortunate. I will be and, back. And I know people apps. were. Sorry. Hmm? I think Scurvy's gonna take a little walk for a little bit. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> And, you know, and, and I know people were, in that instance, they were, um, you know, contacting me and a little upset with me, but, um, you know, what, what they don't know and which was frankly none of their business was, you know, I was already trying to, you know, find out if someone knew her, get, get someone looking into this, that type of thing. So, um, geez, I'm not. Yeah, Not we had a whole, cool. like, behind-the-scenes discussion going on on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I was in contact with, with Jason, and, and he was being very responsible as well. You know, I mean, he does watch his comment section. Um, so, yeah. You know, that was just, it was, it was just kind of a, kind of a strange thing. It's one of those things that it reminds you of a few things, you know? But, um, yeah, the next point we got here is a really good point, is you don't always have to repeat what you've heard. Yeah, that was a personal pet peeve of mine. Okay, I need to rant here for a second. Okay. Now, let's say hypothetically I haven't said hi to you in six months. From my opinion... That means, well, on the receiving end, if someone hasn't said hi to me in six months and all of a sudden they whop me with a bomb of gossip, I just sort of feel used, you know? I mean, it's like, wow, you, you just stopped by. You just let me know this. You're completely out of here. You haven't asked how my day's going. You, I barely even know you. Why are you doing this? Do you honestly think I am this shallow? You had to vent and you were a target? No, that would... Um, I've still got... I've still uh, 
got it if we really want, but uh, I don't like being considered police action. When the per when the person comes down to, I really hate that it has to come to this, but I'm going to tell PCP. He's like, dude, what the? And now, we just ran to a microphone and pull hair out while post-producing it. That's all. Occasionally we get downloads, but hey, they never listen more than once, so we're good to go, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, I don't like being used. Okay, now, here. And continue with my rant, okay? Who here has not had a bad day? Come on, Scare, if you know me, I've never had a bad day in my life. Yeah, I'm perfect. Sorry, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going we're gonna to pick on Barrett. Yeah. Well. He never okay. talks. Well, he, well, he needs to participate. <laughs> now, let, let's, let's say Barrett has a bad day. Okay. Barrett just totally, wow, what the fuck, Barrett, okay? I have to beep that later, my bad. But, uh... <clears throat> It's not news. Okay. I mean, I hate to say it, but I mean, if it's just Barrett, if you assume hypothetically if Barrett's a big name pagan, like or Peter or Kara or Miles or whatever, they just, psh, they blow up. If it's not affecting the community at large, it's not news. If you think it's news, please tune in to Emma. Please tune in to MSN and look down where it says Celebrity Watch or whatever the heck they call it, okay? Please divert your attention there. Thank you. But, uh, so, if that, blah, I can't even form coherent thoughts right now. But basically, don't go with the people and just blabber gossip. Yeah, I don't. But here's here's I, there's an interesting thing that happened and because Scarab doesn't watch TV he he probably doesn't know about this, um, and let me just I checked MSN yesterday. I I just uh, and I'm going to prefix this, but I, I would not be surprised if this was a sociology or psychology experiment done as part of a dissertation or as a class experiment. <laughs> so somebody um, made a uh, a fake. McDonald's sign, and we'll we'll skip past what it said first. But at the bottom was a phone number. Now this is a McDonald's sign. The phone number goes to Kentucky Fried Chicken, not the same company. They're not even owned by the same parent company or anything like that. <laughs> okay. The content of the sign said that due to insurance issues, all African Americans will now be charged an extra dollar fifty um, for their meals. This went on to Twitter, and it spread like wildfire. Now, had somebody so much as thought to call the 800 number on the sign, which is very legible and very clearly visible in the photograph that everybody was sharing, they would have realized it was a fake, because it was Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and thus proving that people just mindlessly reproduce anything they hear. And now just think, if you're one of those people that shared it, you look like a complete effing idiot. Because you didn't fact check. Because, because you, you just chose a McDonald's sign with Kentucky Fried Chicken's phone number on well, it. <laughs> that's wrong, but it is funny. I mean, it's cruel. It's like a, so, so many multi... Effective levels are wrong there. Wow. And if you want, I, I you need wonder, to actually see this in text to fully appreciate it. Makes me wonder if it was posted by an employee of KFC to make McDonald's look bad, mm -hmm. or if it was, or if the phone number means that KFC was the one who was en enacting that policy, but they couldn't say it themselves, and so they happened to put the message somewhere else. Like on the rival company. Corporations are mean to each other, but they're not overt about it. They're not going to do something that uh, obviously incriminating. Yeah. Um, I, I'm more in favor of the somebody with an impulse control problem and a bright idea theory, but... They did it for the laws. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, it's long worth. And then congratulations, you think troll in real life? Anonymous, they're not just hackers anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, go ahead. Um, and if someone wants to say that, um, oh, let's make up a completely absurd thing. Let's say that someone. And say that someone claimed to have seen. Oh, who's the good candidate? I don't know. Let's say someone claimed to have seen Newt Ingrich masturbating to a picture of Lady Gaga. Just suppose, and said they'd seen this. It would be wildfire like mad. Would people verify it? No, they just pass along because it's fun to pass that kind of crap along. It might they be true, it might not be would true. Would you want to verify Newt Gingrich masturbating to Lady Gaga? <laughs> yeah, good boy. I'm just going to have to take that Anthony Weiner guy and then, it, and then, and then blow that up to an, to an absurd level of impossibility. But anyway, no, no. Um, but that's the kind of thing that people would share just because it's lol-worthy. I don't think lol-worthy is the same as gossip. If my imaginary witch in Sacramento Lady Blackwell, and if there really is a Lady Blackwell, I apologize for misrepresenting you, if she, if she was going through a nasty breakup with her boyfriend and it went all over the local Sacramento pain blogs and whatever else, that she's breaking up and what does it mean and all this and this and that. That's gossip. That's not just lols. You know? But part of this is also when you're the target of this, whether uh, people might disagree with the terminology target, but if you're the target of this, this gossip that somebody's slandering you, it's still up to you to grab this thing by the horns as fast as you can and take control of the conversation, which McDonald's is desperately trying to do. But the problem is, is that this whole social experiment has better – it's been much better at communicating to the average Joe than McDonald's can do it. Because yeah. this thing is still spreading like wildfire, even though McDonald's is like, this is total fake. There, there's no such thing. Mm-hmm. And people just – they're, they're doing this on the broadcast news, which people don't watch anymore. <laughs> well, the other thing, though, is once a message goes out there, it's extremely difficult to combat that false message. It's extremely hard. You're playing catch-up at that point. And most people with the short attention span, they see the first item, they check that out, they spread it, and then when more information comes out about it, they don't even check into that because their assumption is it's just more of what they've already seen. Yeah. Or, I mean, look at the or Marine article. they hear it and they don't remember it. Yeah, or, or they reproduce it because they think it, it aligns with what they want to believe. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I've, you know, I've seen where people post something and I correct them and say, you know, this this wasn't real. I mean, you've kind of been taken in by something. And the people have said to me, yeah, that may be, but this is this is better than real. This is representative of what I think that person or that group is like. And so even though this isn't true, it's how I see them, and so I'm going to spread this because I don't really care if it's true or not. It's what? representative of what they possibly could do. Yeah, like the plan for the bizarre thing. Complex. Yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, is on Yelp now. That's totally hilarious. <laughs> People leave him ratings for this place that doesn't exist. That was in an Onion story. <laughs> I hate to say it, but some of those Onion stories, sometimes I have to wonder if they're a farce. Well, it was funny. <laughs> I was on a group project as a freshman in college, and uh, somebody was actually citing the Onion as part of our group research paper, and we had to calmly explain to them what satire was. Wow. <laughs> well, I think the one where the, uh, what was it, the uh, paleontology class and the uh, fundamentalist Christian who believed in the new world, I mean, I, I think I lived through that. 
Not quite the paleontology class, but you know. So. Okay, Scurv, where were you going from here? Because I'm looking at this topic and I'm like, <laughs> what can I say about it? I was like really writing with feeling right here. When I, remember when I said I'm, I'm using show notes to vent? Yes. Yes. Somebody had me heated. By the way, keep doing that. We get a lot of good episodes when you do that. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, yeah. Let's be real. What inspired this, anyway? Amika? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Let's be real. Sometimes pagans will take a, fa- a path perspective view when dealing with pagans, a.k.a. the whole, what do you think, or encourage in self-sufficiency. Um, I'm not sure how to touch this one. I'm not sure how to articulate this one. But, uh, I don't know. Let's move on. Okay. There's a fine line between political correctness and avoidance. Yeah, it's a personal pet peeve of mine. We were just on that topic, by the way. Kinda. Yeah, kinda, actually. <laughs> it's a fine line between observation and name calling. Yes. Yeah, I tend to do both. Yes. Like if you observed as Curvy is an asshole. Yeah. Might be honest something. Now, if you make bad mar- bad comments about my mother, I'll probably yeah, encourage just... you to say them to her, say them to her face. That's actually normally pretty good for a laugh. Come to think about it. <laughs> yeah, that's... Okay. Shit happens. All righty. Here's my heuristic. When. Drama goes down. Was anybody seriously hurt? Will it matter in five years? Hey, that's an amber heuristic. Yep. I like that okay. heuristic. It, it's been very useful. And I, yes. it, the thing is, is I kind of expand on that, is will this happen again in five years? And will it will really annoy really you? Really annoy you. I think Eric is watching. I like how we got the word away on that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Hello. <laughs> okay, let's start a sing along for Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Row, Row, Row Your Boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is no echo. <laughs> oh, man. As Carrie just throws the computer out the window, and now we've lost our connection. <laughs> If no, don't worry, unless it becomes a pattern. And when it's time to compare notes with others, it's when it's a bleeping pattern. Now, I seem to recall about a year ago, I'm thinking pretty close to the day, we were doing some note comparison, you, me, and Amber, correct? Oh, yeah, we were. Actually, yes, actually, it's his... Just about a year ago, exactly, actually. Yeah. Wow. And when you're doing notes comparison, it, it can be a little bit trying and emotional and all that stuff and paranoia invoke paranoia invoking not that some of us are, don't have problems with that already but let's not go there <laughs> hey but uh yeah at a certain point in time it, it, there's a difference between gossip and comparing notes now, let's say Dave and I were sitting down and we're comparing somebody's life story and we're noticing some unreconcilable inconsistencies. Now, I mean, I know it's, it's, it is entirely possible for two people to get somewhat of a different life story from, some, yeah. from someone and them not be lying because they... Hypothetically, Dave's into sports and all that stuff. He might find out entirely about certain somebody's 
high school and college athletic career. And I honestly, if I was into sports and all that stuff, well, I tried to get into sports, and the last time I made an effort, I was switching channels between professional football and court TV every time they threw a flag <laughs> because somehow it just seemed to mesh. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I watched a lot of court TV. <laughs> you know, I bet you in like three years, someone from the NFL will be listening to this show like, oh my god, that's amazing. We need to do that. <laughs> when I get gang raped by a bunch of football fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the only thing is, is that you get to tackle the lawyers. Huh. <laughs> And you don't wear padding. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, let's flat out say what this person claimed, because it is something that would piss off a lot of people. Um, they were claiming to be a Marine, um, except that looking at his life story, there wasn't enough free years left over for him to become a Marine. Well, then... In my case, there's certain things I can normally expect from Marines, which I'm rarely let down. Uh, I, mean, I can I can honestly let count out count the amount of times that I've been disappointed in what what I expected from a Marine about twice when they were actually a Marine, and in one case it's actually quite entertaining currently, but we're not going to go there. We don't need to document my sadistic tendencies. But <clears throat> things I can expect from a Marine, they don't really screw stuff up. I mean, no, I mean, yeah, they do, but not ballistically. And normally, if a Marine don't know what they're doing, they don't critically screw it up. Maybe seriously, but not irrevo irrevocably. They don't go ballistically screw it up. By the way, I forgot to show you that breaker bar. <laughs> Actually, I think I did. No, nah, I probably would have recognized a dent in it. Yeah. Actually, I got the starter in the other room. It makes a pretty good makes a pretty good rattle right now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, How many rooms do you think has to listen to this podcast? Pardon? How many Marines do you think can actually listen to this podcast? Oh, there's a few. Yeah, we're quite popular good. in the military, actually. And prisons. And prisons. Okay. Apparently, prisons. We, we hold the dominance of pagans in captivity. <laughs> yes. Which caused me to do uh, begin to do research for a 12-step episode, and I was hmm. contacting rehabs and all that stuff, and we will talk about rehab spam later. So... The major this kudos is to the, the, main, the whole thousands of you in rehab programs that listen to us. We never knew so, you were out there, but keep it up. <laughs> this is the pagans entered podcast. It's also the pagan incarcerated podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I think we do need to be locked up some days, but let's not go there. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> We're just totally off rhythm. I'm sorry. We're, we're we are off rhythm. rhythm. We don't have any crickets or anything. No Amber. Yeah, they, they finally called no Ashley. Back. Amber stopped dying. Call stopped dying. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Now, before we begin speaking about pacifists, I have to say something. I used to be one. The reason I stopped being a pacifist is I realized that by being a pacifist, I was enabling other bullies to be douchebags not only to me, but to others. So my lack of doing anything, in part, enabled them to harm others. Okay? If you have any complaints with it, what the hell's my email? Uh, Joe at I'mBleedingProfusely.com do I have a Joe one, too? Yeah, you also got Scurvy. Okay, cool. And you also got AdPaganCenteredPodcast.com. See, this is, what happens, this is what happens when you got too many names. 
<laughs> you want it with four email addresses that all go to the same place. <laughs> I'll just put something, something, whatever, pagancenteredpodcast.com. It'll get to me. Or not. <laughs> As long as not as long as it's not the name of another of another host or regular, we're good. Just, just come on to Facebook, join our page. It's all good. Yeah, Unless you're talking. incarcerated. Then just write us when you get out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> who was it that commented about pacifists view it as an open permit to be a complete douchebag? Because you do not kill people. Was I don't know Scar? who wrote that, but that sounds like something I would hear on like paganspace.net. I'm sorry, okay? Here, here, here's my definition of pacifist, okay? A pacifist is somebody who does not cause harm. Verbal and physical. If you're being an emotionally manipulative little douche, you're not a pacifist. I'm a pacifist. I don't cause intentional harm. I'll buy, I might I'll, I'll buy off on I'm, that. I might accidentally cause harm, but it's not my intention to harm others physically, verbally, emotionally, whichever. I'll sign off on that. I'm good. definition, I think I'm a pacifist, you know. Um, and example I use is that if I'm... Uh, if... Uh, if I'm trying to land a job and I cast a spell to help me get a job and the spell works and I get employed, that's cool and I have a job, but I've also then denied that job to somebody else who wanted the job, therefore unintentionally causing him harm. Well, that's just food chain. <laughs> okay, food chain. Not a personal guy. No, what it's I not mean. at all. It's not personal at all, and so I'm, you know, I'm an absolute pacifist. I try to be non-violent. Yeah, um, it, and I do sometimes far too easily roll over and get trampled on. I really do. I'm bad about that. I'm a non-defensive pacifist. I I I went that route, but. One of the, but I view not only the outcome of my actions but also the inactions. And at the time, it well, let's just say that I stopped being a pacifist. It was highly therapeutic. Cool. Not entirely. Man, I just killed the room. Yeah, you did. I'm a pacifist. <laughs> Stalkers in the pagan community. Well, on, the, on the last thing about pacifism, I won't throw in my two cents. I mean, I used to be a pacifist until me and the police had a certain disagreement about them hitting my car. And police car hit your car? Uh, undercover police officer hit my car. Um, wow. He was working for, um, what is it, drug enforcement of the state troopers, which thank you very much to the local newspaper for outing them on that. Awesome. Um, cool. Yeah, ever since, ever since I've been a victim of police corruption, I've learned to just uh, take things in my own hands. I mean, granted, I don't have a disrespect for law in the sense of I don't obey it. No, I obey it. I, I, it's still very much in compliance, I guess you would say, with the left-hand path philosophy of... Don't be stupid. You know, if someone's more powerful than you, then you got to realize they're more powerful than you and know your role and not be too big of a douche about it. 
Well, here's my stance on that. There's the practical law and the effective law. The effective law, or the, the legal law and the effective law. The legal law says you shouldn't, you shall not jaywalk. The effective law is well, whatever. <laughs> it's situationally enforced. Like uh, I discovered with bullying and when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. It might have been something that they weren't supposed to hit me. But really at a certain point I just said, you know, um, yeah, let's see if this works both ways. Which, by the way, if you have an inch of paper and all that, or inch, inch of uh, paper and all that stuff, where your um, bully gets let off with a verbal warning from assault, that looks really awesome when you want to make the argument of, well, it's allowed. See, doesn't mean they got to listen. I still did have the friggin' detention, but hey, I feel I felt I want a moral victory. Then I called my mom. Yeah, and then I lost the war. <laughs> <laughs> that is how that story went down. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I love. Don't get me wrong. I love my mom. Okay, I mean, I, I say this with all affection. She's she's a psychotic bitch. <laughs> I gotta meet your mom one day. You should come meet my mom. We should do a. A mom exchange. Oh, this could get good. <laughs> we are going to a heathen gathering at, in August, hopefully. So, you'll be in my neck of well, my old neck of the woods. This could get really entertaining. Oh, my mom's awesome. Should, she's she's pretty mellow. We should invite Miles up. Sure, it's awesome. <laughs> How the hell are you get miles up to freaking Pennsylvania? Well, I have a car. I know how to drive. Okay. Okay. When are we talking I, I, about I am this? picturing it now. A, a hmm. Miles and Joe RV experience. That would be interesting, actually. I, there would I, be I, lots of. Hmm? I foresee arguments. I don't. It's a very short drive in the RV. That's like. I mean, that's well uh, within your, you know, that you could go round trip without charging that battery. <sighs> sure. <laughs> sure, drive. Oh, for me, yeah, that's, or is that up there in Hazleton or whatever? No, uh, it's in Milford, so it's about a you know, three-hour trek from where you are, at the very most. That's not too bad. Ten for me. About... I mean, that, that, that RV lasts like eight hours on a single charge. <laughs> Boy, you got more batteries. <laughs> or you just install an alternator and not have to worry about these things. But, you know, that that's optional equipment. <laughs> You will sooner put a, a solar panel on the roof of that RV to charge that battery than install, like, the right voltage regulator or alternator or whatever it is that you need. <laughs> Actually, I had to test it down there. The guy said it was good, and I, I Yeah, that the worked out real well, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I was like, well, I, sh I could buy another one. Eh, he said it's good. Eh, we should be okay. Stalkers. Yeah. We, well, since Star's not here, I'll, I'll go there. We used to have a certain Christian day that was stalking uh, Star Foster. You can beep it out later if you want. We'll fill it in with Sarah Palin of Salem. Oh, Lordy. Okay, we used to have a certain Sarah Palin of Salem that was stalking, <laughs> stalking a certain Star Foster. That was awesome. Yeah, that was, that was all kinds of special. Yeah. yeah that's everyone chasing me around for a while, too. <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of entertaining, though. Here I was, there I was. I was trying to support his view on the internet, and he tracks me down amongst the thousands of people that he has on his friends list on Facebook, 
and says, why are you lying about me? I'm thinking, I quoted you exactly. I know I quoted you exactly. I used copy-paste. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to censure this one. Um, I believe if you say Christian Day three times on any webpage, he will magically show up to comment. He's the Bloody Mary of the internet. I double dare somebody. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, it has to be in text format that's searchable by Google so he can get it on his Google alerts. (laughs) Well, everybody's saying... Christian Day. Christian Day. <laughs> Underneath their breath. Let's move on to Kara's fan club. Missed one. Christian Day. There you go. Got three. <laughs> oh, Kara's not here anymore. Her connection died. Apparently, after she threw her laptop out the window, it didn't come back from the dead. <laughs> that's the story I'm making up, and that's what I'm going to go with. Hey! hey you could be a reporter for Fox News, then. Now, no, Fox News has an agenda. I don't. <laughs> uh, I'll believe you on that. <laughs> Silence. Wow. <laughs> I have no agenda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not to be confused with the show uh, No Agenda, which does have an agenda. <laughs> hey, Rady. Wow, there's all sorts of chat going on here. See, uh, Hound and Big Name Pagans for Approval. Yeah, that was fun to watch. Yeah, how to criticize, how do you accept criticism? Ah, how to accept criticism. This could be an instruction manual to our friend Sarah Palin in Salem. Actually, now, just to let everybody know, these are the heuristics I use on a daily basis. Okay. So if if you have any faults, please let me know. I am looking to improve. How to accept criticism. Listen to the words that are said. Yeah, and don't filter them out. Actually listen and process those words. Repeat them back. Ask them questions. Think about it. And don't just focus on the things you want to bicker about. Listen to all the words. Because you see what happens when I come off of my heuristic on there. And I'm sorry. Yeah, you sound like Sarah Palin from Salem. Oh, fuck you. (laughs) Well, you do get that kind of crazy. (laughs) Hey, this is a gift for my mama. (laughs) Try to understand the words that are said. Okay, we already covered that. Um... I actually view these as two different steps, okay? So you got to listen. And now after you listen, you need to understand. You need to internalize this, okay? If you are accepting criticism, this is like studying for a test. And don't just like process it for emotional reactions you can possibly have, you know. Take it in. Also take in the fact that this person is trying to help you out in some way, even if they're being a complete douche about it. Most people who are offering criticism, if you say to them, I need a couple days to think about this, we'll give it to you. Yep. As Dave obsessive compulsively corrects my spelling. Yep. I'm totally doing that right now. <laughs> You're just sort of using that to keep track of where we've been, aren't you? No, it, it, I think it's like an OCD thing. I, I, I just can't stand misspellings. <laughs> I just sort of think the squiggly lines are decoration. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, interesting. I'll bet you're a hooting in calculus class. I like calculus one. Calculus two? Maybe one I I don't know. (laughs) I don't don't know the proper... No, I don't know the proper level of violence to express (laughs) what (laughs) calculus two did to me. And in calculus three, I was burnt out. 
I confess, actually, I'm crap all at math. I failed algebra twice. I never really... I reached my mathematical plateau at long division. In fourth grade, long division, I never grasped that, and I've never gotten beyond long division. So, and I got to eighth grade algebra, A2 plus B equals C, my brain just melted. <laughs> Step three, pretend a person speaking, pretend a person speaking to you is worth your respect. Yeah, definitely pretend if you need to. It helps. <laughs> Step number four, try not to defriend them on Facebook, Skype, LinkedIn, and such. So if you have received a credible threat of violence, um, blocking and banning their ass and reporting them to every social network... Is a good tactic to do. Yes. Uh, oh, people. Now, on the off chance that you should actually decide to do this, it tends to show either immaturity or attempts at a complete suffering, okay? And... I'm not saying if someone's pissed you off enough times that you shouldn't block them on everything. I mean, at a certain point, you got to take care of yourself. But that's the stage of the game where you have to say, do I want them in my life? Can I just sort of phase them out? I, I, I think the thing here, too, is if this is your first confrontation with uh, constructive criticism or just criticism of any type, that alone, if, if it's your first time or even your second time with this clashing horns with this person, you, you, yeah, you're gonna act, you're gonna look childish if you just run away with all your toys. Basically, yeah. Now, if you're like the, the like a member of Karis fan club, yeah, then okay, time to cut ties. I seriously like to meet some members of Karis fan club and face to face. So are you guys going to elaborate on this at all? or Karis Fan Club? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, we actually had a whole episode about it. We had a three-part episode about it. Yeah. Um, there's a, Kara gets uh, threatened with death and stuff on a pretty regular basis and other oh, stuff yeah. I can't say. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I try to inspire her level of hatred, but somehow I just fail at it. I think it's because she's so articulate in the way she speaks and people don't like hearing what she says. Yeah. <sighs> but here's a little uh, checklist for you. If you're doing this as a slapstick reaction, it's most likely a childish reaction. And children... I'm sorry about the usage of this word. I didn't mean to disparage your age group. If you're doing... Usually children are above this behavior. <laughs> yeah, normally. If you're doing this, except most likely, it will make waves in the community. So ask yourself, what are people who will see this going to say? Is it warranted? Is it something I want to do? Are you being, are you being an immature douchebag? Is it about time? It's amazing how um, how many people think number D and they will never speak up. Well, on the record, at least. Yeah. People you would never expect to choose that fourth option of it's about time will choose that option. And it's even more amazing when Sarah Palin of Salem says that these people love him. I find that awesome it's like oh i can't tell you which person it is but oh my god i am laughing my butt off right now speaking of which how's that reaction video coming oh man that's a bitch you post produce <laughs> i got i got audio on one track one video on one track a video on another track i finally got the videos lined up and now i gotta get the freaking audio post produced this is fun <laughs> ever well, don't worry. I'm only going to do like a 15-minute video. you got to do like freaking four hours of opening ritual at, at, at Pow Wow. So as, soon as, I get your, as soon as I get your half. Oh, yeah, that's right. i got to give you my half. 
because my half has all the good audio. The other way on around. It. Yeah. Okay. I'll get that up Dropbox tonight. Oh shit! You asked for it. <laughs> no, I mean my my big problem with Sarah Palin of Salem is um, this individual projects rather than has discourse. And that bothers me to my core. You haven't actually listened to their podcast yet, have you? I don't want to. Ananta Andrews Coggan had a very uh, brief summary of the show, and as a result of that, and I deeply respect Ananta and his uh, opinions on stuff, and as a result of his review, I will never be listening to a show. Well, we'll leave it at this. His show, I believe, qualifies as hate speech in quite a few countries. Yes. And normally I'm perfectly willing to go and substantiate any claim I make, but considering he's just sort of got like two, three-hour unpost-produced episodes, um, well, um, bite me. It'd be okay. It's, it's it's not a bad thing to hate people in and of itself, but when you're hating people for merely disagreeing with you, or yeah. quoting what you said and giving citation, you kind of come off as a little bit mentally unhinged. No, I'm a little bit mentally unhinged. That's why you like me. Yeah, good that guy's just effing nuts. That's okay. I can prove I'm batty. <laughs> good pun, sir. Good pun. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how much mileage I get out of that, too. You get mileage out of being batty? Cool. I get mileage out of it. <laughs> yeah, I gave you two. <laughs> how to offer criticism. First off, even though I forgot to put this in the show notes... Be calm. Use your calmness to set an example for how this conversation is about to go. And it will be one-on-one when you talk to this person, preferably after they've calmed down, if possible. Now, we should you- recap that this is the correct way to offer criticism. Oh, I'm, I'm by no means an expert, so if I mess something up, please let me know. Okay? Never do it publicly. Yeah, like, we would never ever come up with, like, uh, an analogy like Sarah Palin of Salem. (laughs) To criticize someone. Well. Yeah, but we break our own rules, too, so. Yeah, but, I mean, see, it's okay. I think it's okay to deviate from these rules when you realize the person is not going to be abiding by all that crap we just talked about. Actually listening, having discourse. No, we know this person listens for things to get enraged about and nothing else and wants to be right and has no interest in thoroughly listening to you. So at that point, it's like it's like threatening physical violence on me. At that point, gloves off. I'm out to kick your ass in any way I can. Oh, sounds like a plan. But most people are not that childish. So most people should follow these criteria. I mean, most people are willing to listen. Most people are willing to be good people. Normally. Normally. Again, we got that whole bad day thing going on, but still. Yeah, one on one, you never do it publicly. You know, if you truly want something to be settled, you're not going to get it done in the venue of Twitter or Facebook, at least not public Facebook. Um, keep them on your faith path. I mean, if you're, especially if you're a, a well known representative of that faith path, um, you know, I, I say a lot of things about the Sarah Palin of Salem, but I never invoke his faith path in my ramblings about him. I mean, faith is not a reason why I do not like him. He can go on and love what he does all day long. He can call it whatever the hell he wants to call it. 
that doesn't mean I have to like the guy. Yeah, I love special people, too. But this last one is always the interesting one. Ask yourself, am I being a dick? Yeah, I forgot to do that the other day. My bad. I know I'm being a dick right now. But, like I said, other options have been exhausted. Until options are exhausted, don't be a dick. Calm down. Again, have the mental equivalent of some NyQuil... And sleep it off. (laughs) Conflict is not a bad thing. Conflict is growth. It can be useful. Especially when people actually get to work through their issues, projects, whatever, you know. It tends to be largely miscommunication. Yeah. Tends to be. Usually, surprisingly. Not always. No, but sometimes, in, uh, you know, you just learn that there's entirely new reasons to not like someone. So, I, I, I'm going to give up on picking on the Sarah Palin of Salem because I think I've, I've done enough to him tonight. I'm going to start picking on somebody else. Um, we're not going to name names because people that know what went on are obviously going to rep- recognize the personalities involved. Um, sometimes there is miscommunication. Sometimes there is something going on that really disturbs people. Like when someone goes on a pagan podcast and then says that all monotheists, whether they be Abrahamic or pagan, need to die. And here I am talking about some silly guy in Salem... And this person's out and out promoting it. Yeah, we should get them. We should get them together. No, no. I, I think I think Salem is all bark and no bite. I think this person's actually going to go out and buy a gun and start shooting people. Yeah. I listened to the episode, and all other. How do I say this? I might not always see eye to eye with Lamika, but I do trust her instincts, if not her judgment. I know, it sounds like I just had an oxymoron there. And let's be clear, we're not talking about Lamika making death threats. No. I was listening to that episode, and I was actually a little bit, there's a word for this, what is it? You know that, you know that feeling you get when you're watching a horror movie? Speechless? Maybe it's horror. It could be. Yeah, we're not familiar with that concept. Let's go with Horror. Okay. Or I don't think Miles is Miles, have you listened to that episode? Miles is gone. Oh man. Barrett? Which episode are you speaking of? Uh, oh, I think it's Lamika's latest one. No, it's one of the latest ones. No. A certain person who claims to be also true? No, didn't hear it. Uh, you need to. I think even Barrett might get angry with this one. If you we could do a reaction video. God. If you could find a link for me, I'll listen to it. Oh, absolutely. This one, this one's pretty good. We should do a reaction video. And there's a link. <sighs> Dave, it's my job to rickroll the Asatru on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's my job to enrage people. <laughs> I imagine get Dave Karen incredibly, like, super duper pissed off at this. <laughs> in 
then I wonder why there's a presentation at PSG about locating the antagonists in the pagan community. <laughs> Who's doing that one? Um, oh, geez, I can never remember the guy's name. Patrick, not McCollum, the other one. Just let him know that I think he's all sorts full of awesome and when. Yeah, he's doing one on the on the the financials of Circle Sanctuary and the other one on locating and taking this in the vacant community. So he's doing all those four hour presentation blocks almost directly at me. <laughs> awesome. But back on conflict, usually it is miscommunication. And it is an opportunity to resolve issues. Conflict is not always a bad thing. It can be a very constructive thing. You just got to think outside what you normally would consider acceptable. Mm -hmm. But, I I mean, you don't have to sacrifice. You just got to think about interesting new ways of getting things done. Ironically, though, normally when it comes to conflicts, people, and I'm guilty of this too, but people have an absolute unwillingness to even provisionally consider the concept. So if you go about it right, or go about it wrong, it is entirely possible that you can be 1,000% right. But here, you And know, if you do it wrong, you've wasted everybody's time. We have a perfect example of this. And it's about somebody being absolutely livid at us. What do you know? People get pissed off at us once in a while. Um, so in episode 105 and 106, we talked about the left-hand path and Satanism. And we tried to talk about the Temple of Set and got basically everything wrong. Um, so so the, the, the head PR guy at the Temple of Set was like, rawr, 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 and he, you know, he did basically everything we t- just talked about. He's like, I'm angry. Let me settle down come back to this, you finish listening to episodes, like, okay, 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 this isn't as bad as I thought it was, but these people are obviously clueless about the Temple of Set. So he sends us an email. Hey, here's the stuff that you said about Temple of Set. Here's where you're wrong. I'm more than happy to come on your show to discuss Temple of Set. Now, Scurvy keeps saying the basic rule of PCP is if you write the show notes, we will do it as an episode. And basically that's yes. what happened. <laughs> yes. And we had an excellent episode about the Temple set, which I still reference people to, like, as late as maybe two days ago. There was a certain Gamma that was upset about that, too. Yeah, that's a whole different situation. Ah, uh, well, um... Now, I'm gonna say one thing. Now, doers tend to have a couple of issues. Doers make mistakes. But that's but, because we're doing stuff. If you don't do stuff, you're not going to make a mistake. Doers also do something else. Doers will say, you know, I got um, a surplus of energy and some spare time. Um, yeah, this seems like a vent. This seems like a way I can vent it energy. And sometimes it's productive. You get a couple of quasi-focused doers in your group. Dude, you're doing good. I say quasi-focused. You don't want them too focused. <laughs> a little spike Because then they become OCD and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. And they I remove every stutter on the show notes unless they're pissed at you. And they'll right-click every squiggly line inside the Google Docs and correct all the spelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Though I think when it comes to audio post-production, I am the least OCD of the entire group. <clears throat> Everybody's like, I gotta remove everything from the stutters. I'm like, that, that, no, actually, Moss doesn't really have much of a stutter anymore, guys. <laughs> Not really, no. But I gotta make show notes. Well, if you did show notes while you were playing the audio, it would be way faster. Oh. I kid you not, though. You know, disagreeing with Miles down there, I almost got lynched. <laughs> So his fan club is like the anti... It's like... Let's say that like Kara's fan club is matter. His fan club is anti-matter. Instead of trying to lynch the fan leader, they're trying to lynch anybody who doesn't like the leader. I mean, I was like, wow. You care. (laughs) 
But dude, seriously, in all seriousness, I, I just liked having about putting Miles on the show because I knew, I remember him being an awesome guy at PSG last year, and it's too bad he can't go this year. But I also remember him being awesome at CNC PBD. So I was really happy. I didn't well, know. I mean, we don't judge people on their rank around here. We judge people on how they are as people. Here was here was me and. I tracked him down on Facebook after everybody did the hard work for me. Thanks, guys. Uh, well, at least I'm honest about it. Yeah, yeah, good point. So then I go. It's like I read his Facebook a little. I read his blog a little. It's like, wow, this guy's got a lot to say. Well, he stutters. I don't care. We'll put him on the podcast. <laughs> this will work. Hey, we've come up with a lot of really bad ideas that have worked out. Well, you see, it's, it's, we got a highly adaptive crew and judgmentally impaired. So, yeah, we gave Barrett his own show. <laughs> that guy never talks, and we've given him his own show. And what do you know? It's actually kind of a good show. <laughs> Go Would listen to it. It's Pagan Men. Okay. We have to record right away. Yeah. What day did we decide on again? Oh, sometime in July. It's on the PCP events page. Okay. I'm trying to inter. I'm trying to interlace those recordings in between PCP recordings so that PCP takes a week off. But then everybody's just signing on, you know, mindlessly on every Wednesday, assuming we're broadcasting. Doesn't get disappointed. <laughs> This way, this should help stem the tide of excessive PCP episodes where we are, you know, releasing Pantheacon in the freaking June. <laughs> I think Dave just wants to be able to light a fire under my ass for post-production. Hey, if we'll make it work faster, I will totally do that. I mean, you want, you want to do that one day. I'm like, okay, so when's this one getting released? Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> All I know is I better come back to P- from PSG and see a couple of episodes done. <laughs> though, though we might finally, finally, you know, be catching up so that we don't need to release two episodes a week to not look silly. Like tonight, we were recording when Jason Pistol Waters got bought out by Pathios. Wow, Pathios! Those were a great company before they got bought out by USA Today, and then that company got bought out by CNN. And now the whole economy collapsed, so now it's government owned. <laughs> Speaking of which, I've been studying uh, uh, Nazi Germany history from a German perspective recently. Huh? What? God, so yeah, I know. I pulled a god one. I don't care. <laughs> Every discussion will eventually lead to Nazis or Hitler. <laughs> Actually, it's not so much the Nazi side. It's more the... Well, it is, but it's... Those Nazis, they were not fighting for Germany. They were fighting for some other country. (laughs) Actually, there's a certain irony to that. um, From a lot of what I read and heard and all that stuff, they, they didn't even really want the war in the East once after it got started. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Hitler was P.O.'d. So that was... You did what? Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you say that in German, but that's pretty much what probably was said in 1942. <laughs> Well, seeing as we have rapidly ran out of co-hosts here, we might as well do final thoughts. My final thought is we should do final thoughts while we have co-hosts. My final thought is listen and then respond as part of discourse rather than projecting that you are right. My final thought is more than a small percentage of this... uh, 
of this podcast revolved around this thing happened, but we can't really talk about it, so we're just going to half talk about it. I was fairly lost. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Damn us and journalistic. I don't know. I'll make up something. <laughs> and when... And when I'm lost, I feel sorry for the not-so-fanatical listeners. <laughs> <laughs> they got my email. Anyways, I gotta go. Alright, signing off. Alrighty. See you all next week. When we talk about stuff that people can actually know about. Recording is ended. <laughs> awesome. We'll figure out how much of that is usable. <laughs> it should be good. Let's see. I'm trying to set up a network so 